Hey everyone, it's Mark Ferguson with Invest For More and welcome to another one of my real estate investing videos. Uh, I'm gonna talk about how to value a property today. I've had a lot of questions about that on YouTube, the Facebook page, Instagram, you know, how do you determine what a house will sell for, what it will be worth once you're done fixing up? So I'm gonna go through that, go over a couple of the properties we have, show you how we value them, give you an idea of how it's done. It's not easy, it's not something you can just figure out overnight, it takes some time, really knowing your market and some experience learning how properties are actually valued. And real estate agents can be a huge help in this as well if you have no idea what you're doing. All right, of course, check out investformore.com. For more information on being an agent, flipping, rentals, wholesaling, all that good stuff. Uh, we've got our Instagram page, um, tons of new content on there every day as well as Facebook. And of course, YouTube. Please subscribe if you want some more videos like this or you wanna see some more fix and flip videos, rental property videos we're doing. All right, so when I wanna flip a property, obviously one of the most important things to know is what it's gonna be worth once it's fixed up. So I know kinda of what I might be buying it for, but I don't really care what it's worth when it's in bad shape. I wanna know what it'll be worth once it's fixed up and in good shape, and then I can work backwards, hey, how many you know repairs does it need? What will those repairs cost? What are the selling costs, carrying costs, all that stuff? Then I can figure out what profit I need and then I can figure out what price I can pay for it. So it all starts with what the property is worth once you fix it up. This is often called the ARV, after repaired value. One of the most important things you can know. And if you're buying rental properties, you need to know this as well too. As if you're buying rentals, you're gonna fix up rent. You need to know what they're gonna be worth in case one day you have to sell them. If you ever want to refinance them, take money out, you know, do the burr strategy and repair them, rent them, refinance them, you need to know what the house is worth or the property after it's all fixed up. So we're going to go through that, show you a few tips, how we do it. Now is a property that I am actually buying today. Hopefully by the time this video is posted, I've already bought it, buying it from a wholesaler and they posted on a Facebook group, said, hey, we're selling this for... I forgot what it was, 165,000. Uh, we talked a little bit, negotiated, and I'm buying it for 155,000, I believe. Somewhere in that range. And so I need to know what this house is worth after I fix it up. And you can see, this is the last MLS when it was for sale, I'll show you. It was for sale for 79,000 back in 2010. Never sold, it was withdrawn. So it shows you how crazy our market has changed in the last nine years now. However, you can see a little bit about of the property. Definitely not in as good of shape now. Uh, needs windows, flooring, probably a roof, some exterior paint. But we want to know what it's worth once we do all that stuff. Someone might say, hey, well, what's it worth now in as-is condition? That doesn't matter to me. I want to know what it's worth once I fix it up so I know how much room I have, for repairs, carrying costs, all that, and make sure I have profit left over. So what we need to do is take a look at the properties that have recently sold in this neighborhood and compare it to those properties. So when you say people say pull comps, what they're saying are comparable sales or comparable listings. And we wanna look at the comparable sales. You can look at the listings to get an idea, but someone can list a house for 400,000 doesn't mean someone's gonna buy it for 400,000. You wanna base most of your values on properties that have sold, not ones that have just been for sale. What you're looking at now is my MLS screen. MLS is multiple listing service. It's what real estate agents can use to search for properties that are for sale or have been for sale, have sold, been withdrawn, all types of different things. This makes it so much easier to value properties than if I was not an agent and I'm going to use this because it's much easier for me to do it and I can kind of show you what I can look at, how I can pull comps and value property much easier than say, trying to go through Zillow and see what sold properties are on there. This is much easier. So what I talked about before was you wanna look at similar properties that have sold. So I have to pick a few things. It's a residential property, status, active, active backup. That means it's under contract, a house has a contract where it could you know, most likely gonna sell, sold. And then I put a date in here. Um, six months is kind of the ideal price range for sold comps. You wanna look in the last six months. If you have to go farther out, 
You can, if it's really hard to find comparable sales, but six months is ideal. And then what I want to do here is I'm going to pull out my little map feature and go to where the property is located. So this property is right in here. And you can see there's major roads in yellow. So when I look to pull comps, I usually want to be like within those major roads, within that same neighborhood. And I know this area very well. I know that this is kind of the same type of properties right in this area. You go over here and there's some manufactured homes, not quite the same. You go across the street and maybe values are a little higher. You never know. You go over here, they're older houses. So you want to try and stay in the same neighborhood, same area. The rule of thumb for appraisers, broker price opinions, those are reports done by agents for banks, is you want to be within a mile. Now I could do my circle feature right here, go in the property, and then go out one mile for my search. But you can see that encompasses a huge amount of space area with lots of different types of properties. So I want to start in this neighborhood and see what I find. I might find enough comps if I do great. If I can't find anything that's sold, if there's just not that many properties or you have a really unique property and there's just nothing similar, then maybe you go out in range and distance, but you start in the smaller area first. So that'll still get this whole area. We click search and see what pops up. So this shows us properties that have sold or are for sale in this neighborhood. And it's interesting, I actually bought this house. This is the one I bought, the cheapest one. That's from the MLS, it's got tenants in it right now and they will be out in April and then we'll start working on it. Then there's a house right here, which we actually looked at, um, thought about flipping, but ended up not doing it. Didn't think there was quite enough room in it. And uh, I'll show you something here in just a second. Then there's one here that sold for 201. So now we're getting kind of closer. We wanna see what the properties are worth once they're fixed up and similar properties. So the one that I'm buying is a three bedroom, one bath, like right around 900 square feet, has a one car carport, not garage. Pretty similar to this house, very similar. And then, so I'm gonna look at the list price is listed for 212, sold for 201, that's the important number. Sold in October, which isn't too far away, but still five months ago. So your market, if your market's changing, you need to count for that. Have prices gone up, have prices gone down? See how quickly it sold, 35 days it took to sell. So a little bit of time, but not bad. Um, lot size might be important. Ours is an average size lot. So as long as there aren't any crazy um, huge lots with the comparable properties, it's not that important. Beds, bathrooms, carports the same. Age, you, you typically want to be within 10 years of age. If there's an older or newer property, it's, it's tough to value it. So you've got to make adjustments, which means, you know, deduct or increase value based on the age of the comps, but it's best if you can find similar age comps and square footage. We want something similar as well. If you've got one that's more than 20% bigger, more than 20% smaller, very hard to compare those two properties because they're so different and people will value them much differently. So you want to try and find similar ones. So once we've seen this property is pretty similar, then we can pull up the pictures and kind of see what condition it's in. It's brick. Looks okay from the outside, nothing special. Backyards, a little dead. Inside, can't see a whole lot, a little bit. Um, it's not bad, not amazing. You can tell, you know, it's not brand new. They didn't even show a picture of the kitchen, which automatically makes me think it's outdated. So if you are listing a house and you have a new kitchen, make sure you show pictures of it because people will automatically think it's not in good shape. Um, and we can look at the comments, full brick house, three bedrooms, sprinkler system, front yard. So a few comments, not amazing, but you know, it gives us an idea. Okay. Our property's worth probably at least this, probably more because this one hasn't been completely updated. So we'll keep looking. Here's another one that's under contract active backup. So that means they have a contract on it. Someone's agreed to buy it. They're just in the process of buying it. So again, we'll look at two bedroom, one bath. So ours has three bedrooms. It's worth a little more. This one has is a little bigger, has a little more square footage. 
older. It's a much older house, so that's something to consider. Hey, maybe it's not a good comp. It has a two-car detached garage, so it's got a much nicer garage. And we'll kind of look at pictures here. And they show almost nothing, so <laughs> it's not very much help. But it gives you an idea. You can see the garage is not in amazing shape, so it's not, you know, the greatest comp. Um, then we read down here, great starter investment property, detached garage. Um, do, do, do. Doesn't say a whole lot, has no pictures. Again, makes me think it's not in amazing shape. So, and it's older. So I'd avoid using that comp if I could, just because it's so much older. Here's the one I was actually talking about before. The one I said, we looked at to flip, but didn't flip. Someone did flip it besides us. And they sold it for 217. They bought it for 168 not much room there. I don't know if they made a whole lot of money because you've got carrying costs, repair costs, and they might've made a little bit, but I don't think it's a huge money maker. And you can kind of see the pictures here, um, what they did. I don't know if those are, I'm guessing those are older cabinets. They just painted white appliances. They went on a very, very cheap remodel, but it's still sold. This isn't a price range where you don't have to do crazy remodels. I don't even think they, you know, did a whole lot in the bathroom. So it's a very affordable remodel. So they probably made some money, but this gives us a really good idea of what ours will be worth because it's in the condition that ours will be in, or maybe even ours might be a little nicer. So this is the kind of the property we want to compare ours to. Similar age, similar size, only has two bedrooms where ours has three. So this one sold for 217 yesterday. Perfect. <laughs> How could you ask for a better comp? Took five days to sell, so it sold very quick. So we know this is kind of the price range where ours probably is. It has a real garage. Ours has a carport. Those two probably kind of even out when you consider it has one less bedroom. So without getting into a serious analysis here, this gives us a really idea of what ours will be worth once it's fixed up. Now we can keep looking, keep seeing where the comps there are. Here's one bigger four bedroom, two bath, um, 1250 square feet. So this one you could use as a comparable, but it's quite a bit bigger. So, you know, you'd rather find ones that are more similar. It's not in bad shape either. Oh, it's got some really dark carpet. So pink. Yeah. Amazing. Probably won't be in as good a shape as ours will be. So, I would still be basing it off that other comp. Here's another one that sold for 223, three bedroom, one bath, 962 square feet. This, again, really similar to ours. This is one we want to kind of look at and see what we can find. There you go. Looks like new flooring, new paint kitchen. It's okay, not bad, not amazing. But this one is in pretty good shape. It's ours were will probably still be nicer, again, in that 223 range, but it has a garage and ours doesn't. So just something, oh, those doors, not very good doors, they're okay. Covered patio. So this gives an idea, we're, we're still kind of right in that 220 to 225 range uh, with this property based on that comp, the condition. Keep looking a little more. Here's when it's under contract, that's what pending means. 950, no garage three bedroom, one bath. So this one's really similar as well. Updated kitchen. Looks like it has some hardwood floors. Still not, you know, super amazing. Pictures could be a lot better. So again, this gives us an idea we're in that 225 range as well. Then we'll kind of keep going here. Another one, all of them kind of in that range. This one has a garage again. Oh, it's got nice kitchen good doors. So we're still looking, you know, in that range and we'll start to see, you know, this one's bigger, look at that half acre lot. So you've got to look at that. Once I see that, I don't even really want to look at this comp too much of an outlier. I've got other comps I can look at. I'll just pass by it. Here's one. It's got a basement, four bedroom, two bath. We're at 240. No picture, but still now we're jumping up in price range. Here's another one with a basement, finished basement, 250. So now we can say, hey, we're probably way too high. These have basements, not similar to ours. We can kind of go back down to here and, and see we're right in that, probably in 
probably 220 to 230 price range for this property based on the comps, what's for sale, what's active. So this is a pretty rough way to value the property. If you really want to get into it, what you can do is write down the main features of your property, write down the main features of like your three best comps and go line by line, which one has more bedrooms, more bathrooms, and try and put a dollar amount on how much those are worth. But for me, we can kind of do a quick glance, quick look at the neighborhood, see what's for sale, what's not for sale, what's sold, and then get an idea of what the property's worth. Okay, so you get an idea of how we come up with value pretty quickly, just looking at comps on the MLS to figure out what a property's worth. And of course, we've been doing this for 15 plus years and have an idea of what values are already. We're doing a lot of purchases, sell, sales in the area, so that helps us as well figure out what stuff's gonna be worth and what it will sell for, as well as how quickly it will sell. Now, something else to consider. We're looking at a fairly you know, small, cookie cutter, basic house. The bigger it gets, the more complicated it gets with acreage, if it's unique to a neighborhood, if it's really old and all the other houses are newer, if one house is really new and all the other houses are older, if it's much bigger, much smaller, it gets much harder to value a property, much harder. And I really love buying houses like this that are like all the houses around it, easy to value. We have a really good idea of what it's gonna cost to repair. Even if we're making slightly less money on it than say a crazy big house, I'm totally fine with it. Um, our auction.com house, which we've done a number of videos on, is a much bigger house. Really cool, interesting house, has a huge lot. That makes the house neat and fun to work on, but also makes it really hard to value. You know, our value is kind of somewhere between 350 and 400. Now, we'll be fine if we sell it for 350, but it would sure be a lot nicer if we sold it for 370 or 380. But there's no other comps just like that house, so it's really hard to know exactly what it will sell for. So when you get those really unique properties, you have to give yourself a lot more room and realize that your values could have a big range that could affect your profit and it might take longer to sell those properties that are really unique as well. And finally, if you're having problems valuing these properties, finding comps that are similar, when you go to sell it, you know most buyers are gonna to need to get a loan, they're gonna to have to have an appraisal done to determine the value for the bank, the appraiser is gonna have a really hard time finding comps as well, and with those unique properties, especially when they're fixed up and you're trying to sell them for more than other properties in the area, there's a much better chance that appraiser is gonna value a property low. You might have a contract for 250 or 350, but he comes back and says, well, my comps only show it's worth 330, sorry. And there's ways to challenge it, ways to work on that, but when you have these real simple, basic houses, much easier to get the appraisals to come in right, there's lots of comps, lots of ways to justify your price, that makes it easier for you to sell, easier for the appraiser to value it. All right. That is all we've got for this video. Uh, I will try to link to a couple other videos. I do have a video that goes over how houses are appraised that really goes into how they value them, which kind of is a supplement to this as well. And then also how to challenge an appraisal if one comes in low. There are ways to try and challenge it, work around that process too. And then of course, check out investformore.com. Lots more information there. And if you liked it, give us a thumbs up. Please leave a comment if you have any questions or concerns, and we'll have much more, um, many more videos coming up soon. Like I said, just buying that wholesale deal today, unless something crazy happens, we'll have a new video of it next week. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it. We'll talk soon.